Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples on a blissfully humid free morning. I mean, it's moist as hell. It's been raining for the last, I don't know how many hours, 18, 20 hours. Uh, we got a little reprieve this morning, although uh, a couple little mists as I was driving over here. So uh, who knows if that's going to continue or not. But it seems to have blown in some kind of a front. And for the first time in a few days, I'm not dripping by the time I hit the record video. And uh, that's got me very, very chipper this morning. It's, what is it, about 70 degrees. It actually feels very nice. And uh, there's another creepy bird. I'm telling you, they're... Uh, they seem that maybe summer being here, or yeah, they're coming back. Uh, they're, you know, I see a lot of bird activity around. You see the one flying over there. One just went the other direction. Uh, I haven't seen that woodpecker this morning, but I imagine he's somewhere watching me. So, and yeah, that thing sounds creepy. Anyway, hopefully uh, they keep their distance and don't come down this way. Uh, today I have a 2019 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack Wide Body, uh, which is an absolute mouthful. And I have to say that I love, I absolutely love what Chrysler is doing currently. I mean, they are bucking the trend, and it just makes me so happy. Uh, you know, to have a company go against the grain. Uh, as it is right now, V8s are becoming smaller turbocharged V8s or turbocharged V6s. Uh, V6s are becoming turbocharged 4s, and turbocharged 4s are becoming even smaller turbocharged 4s. Everything is starting to downsize, and, uh, you know, I think we're seeing the beginning of the end of the rather insane horsepower wars that we've had going for probably the last decade or so. And and uh, it's a little bit devastating. I don't like to see it coming. Uh, it's probably inevitable. All these car companies are now, oh, we're going to go to an electric this or an electric that. And it's vomit inducing. I mean, it's absolutely vomit inducing. An electric Mustang, for Christ's sake. And then you're, you're going to get things like an Aston Martin SUV that's electric and, you know, is going to be based on some other, like a Nissan Rogue with Aston Martin badges on it. It's just the stuff that goes on in the car world today is nauseating and uh, I just have eschewed it. I really, really have. I, you know, for the most part, I stick to older cars that I'm familiar with. I don't think it just makes me a dinosaur uh, or a miserable old bastard. I think it just is... There's a purity to it, a loveliness to it, that you just don't get in modern cars, with the exception of Dodge and Chrysler. I mean, their muscle car lineup is absolutely insane, and it doesn't always match what you get from Ford and Chevy uh, in terms of the handling or track prowess or this or that, but it is unashamedly American uh, in a real America fuck yeah kind of way, and uh, I can appreciate that more than just about anything else, so I really have to hand it to Dodge. Uh, a 6.4 liter in this 2019 model, they're sticking with it, they're sticking with the push rod, <laughs> I just love it, but uh, there are some hints that that's going to come to an end soon, and uh, I think that's all very sad, but at least we got what we got, and you got to be thankful for that. And you definitely have to uh, give uh, Chrysler credit uh, for the rebirth of the insane muscle car that they pulled off over the last decade or so. Uh, you know, again, yeah, definitely good competitors from uh, Chevy and Ford with the Mustang, Camaro, Corvette, uh, even the Cadillac CTSVs, that sort of thing. Uh, but in terms of real, true you know, cartoonish muscle car insanity. Nothing, absolutely nothing competes with uh, what Dodge has done uh, over the last few years. And we'll start to get into that. Uh, so anyway, this is a Challenger, which, you know, you could say is a fabled name in Chrysler history, but not really. I mean, it really... You know, there aren't nine generations of Challengers beloved by people. There are really only three. Uh, there, there was a rebad, not a rebad, a trim level on a Dodge Coronet, and I want to say 1959, uh, that was a Challenger level. And that's the first time the uh, nameplate appeared. But the first true Dodge Challenger uh, emerged in 1970 and was marketed as sort of a large semi-luxurious muscle car meant to compete with the Mercury Cougar, the Ford Mustang, the Camaro. It was pretty late to the game. I mean, the Mustang came out in 64, and uh, here is uh, Dodge 
purportedly giving an answer to it in 1970. But, um, you know, it, it, good things are worth waiting for. And the 70 Challengers were absolutely astounding. Uh, it was a fairly large car at the time. It shared the platform with the uh, Plymouth Barracuda. And just about every engine and transmission Dodge had, Chrysler had, was available in it. I mean, it came... Uh, in, in Challengers, you could get a six-cylinder, you could get the 340, you could get the 383, uh, you could get the 440, and uh, of course the uh, rather incredible 426 Hemi, and uh, a whole wide variety of trim levels and transmissions and option packages uh, that were just very, very cool and, uh, you know, did what they were supposed to do in terms of the muscle car era. And uh, that's, uh, again, pretty neat stuff. Uh, the Challenger RT came out in 1970. RT meaning road and track. <clears throat> and that uh, came with the 383 Magnum, but you could also upgrade it to larger engines and a whole bunch of different stuff. And, of course, Dodge had all of its insane color combinations at the time and pistol grip shifters and, you know, stuff that was just almost cartoonish. In fact, not even almost. Their badges were uh, very much cartoonish. You know, the Super B, the Super Bird, the... Um, uh, it, uh, fuck it. Yeah, again, with the coronavirus whiskey, it all just sort of uh, does what it's going to do. But um, anyway, they had a bunch of neat cartoonish stuff on the cars, and they were crazy. They were crazy colors and crazy setups, and it was wild. Uh, they also had a Challenger TA, which stood for Trans Am, and uh, that was meant for as a, what do they call a homologation car, uh, where you have to make so many for the street to be able to race them. And uh, that was so they could enter the car in Trans Am racing to compete with the Z. 28 and the um, uh, Ford Mustang, the Boss 302, and uh, the 340 uh, came with that, the um, uh, the TA with a six-pack, that was the 340 six-pack, meaning three two-barrel carburetors, and uh, of course those have become rather collectible over the years. Uh, so it had plenty of hot rod trim levels, and they made it, uh, I think 70 by the way, was the only year you could get a shaker hood scoop, uh, which was awesome, that's where the uh, engine uh, intake air filter, what have you, is connected to the engine itself and comes through a hole in the hood. Uh, so when you rev the engine, that thing shakes and torques over and just looks cool as hell. The Trans Am is probably the most famous for it, the Pontiac Trans Am, uh, but that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, anyway, they made the Challenger through 1974 when it died a mid-year death due to declining sales, declining interest in pony cars, uh, you know, the gas crisis, declining interest in horsepower, everything was switching over to small, turdy cars uh, that, um, you know, people had to have and not what they wanted. So it was kind of a shame. Uh, plus, the insurance uh, industry was killing the muscle car by uh, having outrageous rates because, of course, so many kids were driving things into trees and uh, causing all kinds of problems. So, uh, gone, disappeared in 1974, and you wouldn't see it again until 1978, uh, the second generation Challenger, which almost doesn't bear mentioning, honestly, within the context of this video. Uh, because that was just sort of a, they unceremoniously slapped a Challenger badge on a, uh, on a Mitsubishi Galant Lambda Coupe, uh, which was, you know, I give it some credit for being rear drive and available with a manual gearbox, but truly it was just a little fecky uh, economy car, uh, you know, with that peaked out at about 105 horsepower and really did, <laughs> didn't do much for anyone. Uh, it was not in any way badass like the original Challengers. Uh, and uh, that went on until 1983 when it was replaced by the uh, arguably badass Mitsubishi Sterion, which was rebadged as a Dodge Conquest. So an awful lot of badge engineering going on in the 80s. Uh, one could also say the Daytona Laser, you know, they, they also replaced the uh, Challenger in a way, same kind of market, uh, the pony car market uh, of the 80s, if you will. But uh, anyway, 83, gone, poof, there goes the Challenger nameplate again, and does not get heard from again until 2005, when Chrysler starts hinting uh, that they're going to come out with a retro modern car, uh, a pony car, to compete with the Mustang and the Camaro, which have seen a resurgence. Uh, in 06, it showed up at the um, uh, International 
auto shows in RT form, not at all dissimilar to this car that we're looking at, and uh, went on sale in 2008 as the Dodge Challenger RT. They, um, I don't know, made 7,000 or so. They were Hemi powered. They were SRT models and uh, very, very cool at the time. And I absolutely loved them because I think of all the retro modern cars of the era uh, that Chrysler really did the best job of translating the original Challenger design into a modern design while keeping a lot of the stuff that made the original Challenger design cool. <clears throat> you know, the Camaro did a pretty good job of it. Uh, the Mustang always had its little hints uh, here and there of, you know, past uh, Mustangs. But for some reason, the Challenger, particularly, I think, the headlight arrangement uh, with the four rounds and the sort of half-shut eyelid uh, over the top of it. Uh, it really translated that 70s look well, uh, not to mention the, uh, you know, big haunches on the back and the long sleek hood and the stubby tail. Uh, it just did an exceptional job of translating that original Challenger design. Uh, now, the chassis that it was built on bore the fruits of uh, Chrysler's internship with Mercedes. If you remember, Daimler Chrysler was a thing back then. Uh, Mercedes bought Chrysler uh, purportedly to help Mercedes become more of a Volkswagen type car company in mass production uh, while at the same time helping Chrysler increase their quality and their cars and I think Chrysler got the better end of that deal uh, which is probably why Mercedes split up with them a few years later it really didn't go well for Benz joining up with Chrysler uh, however it did go very very well for Chrysler and this car is based on essentially the 300 sedan platform uh, which was a terrific car for uh, for Dodge, for Chrysler Motor Corporation. The 300 was very popular, and deservedly so. I think it was a very cool car, and I still quite like them today. Uh, but that was based on the Mercedes W211 chassis and continues to be until this day. Uh, so the chassis in this particular car you know, it's going on almost 20 years old. I mean, it's not exact. It used the trailing link suspension in the back. Uh, it actually used... Uh not the exact uh, S-Class uh, front end, but the W220 S-Class, it used, uh, you know, an approximation of the front suspension on that car. Uh, it got things like the uh, traction control, the 4 on some of the Challengers, the um, uh, Distronic Cruise, and of course, a lot of the switch gear, quality control, attachment points, a lot of that stuff all came from Mercedes-Benz and has helped to make these pretty, you know, pretty arguably well-built cars, and not only are they pretty well-built in terms of, uh, you know, feel and quality, they go down the road in a very smooth and solid manner uh, that's not at all unlike the way a Mercedes-Benz goes down the road. So uh, it worked out quite well, and the uh, Challenger has certainly gotten the most out of it. I mean, first production year 08, it's still going today. Uh, so you're talking about currently a 13-year production run, uh, obviously with some, you know, underpinning an engine and style upgrades, but still basically the same car. Uh, also, of course, sharing the platform with the Charger uh, and other retro mod. You know, the Charger disappointed me a little bit because it was the four-door. And one of my favorite cars of all time, and I think anyone my age would have to agree, uh, was the 69 Charger that was used in the Dukes of Hazard, And it's one of the most stunning cars out there. I think it was also famously used in Bullet uh, with uh, Steve McQueen. Uh, you know, Bullet, well, he, he was driving that uh, hopped up Ford Mustang, uh, but trailing him was that Hemi-powered Charger. Uh, and in fact, while the Charger was stock, uh, the bullet, the Mustang, had to be hyped up to keep ahead of it. So, uh, you know, definitely the Charger with the bad guys in it had the better car in that setup. Uh, but anyway, the Charger came out as a four-door. and You know, if it makes sense. What are you going to have two hot rod two-doors? You really can't in this day and age. Uh, so it, uh, it truly did have to be the sedan. Uh, but I almost wish the uh, Challenger had been the four-door and the uh, Charger had been the two-door so we could get a modern, you know, Dukes of Hazard looking thing. Obviously, I guess we can't have the roof the way it was, but, uh, you know, you could still have the 01 on the side. Uh, but anyway, so the first year in 08, 
Uh, they were all basically $40,000 hot rods. They sold pretty well. The next year they came out with a more, you know, bigger variety of trim levels. You had a six cylinder entry level cars. You had more luxury versions, uh, SEs and SXs and SXTs. And uh, they have sold extremely well and proven to be very popular. And uh, the Mustang and the Camaro have just sort of ridden along as well. Uh, you know, they make better cars in some ways, the Mustang and the Camaro, in terms of handling or suspension or uh, yeah, maybe not engines, but, um, you know, better all around cars that could attract a BMW buyer, whereas Dodge is just going for the, you know, screaming electric guitar, eagle talent, flying American flags, you know, the hell with everybody else kind of thing. And I just absolutely dig that. But anyway, it carried on and it wasn't enough. And uh, I tell you what, give me a minute. I'm getting text message vibrations for like seven seconds here inside my uh, pants. Let me see what's up with that and I'll come right back into it. All right, so before we get into that, there is a couple of nasty little suckers up there. That looks like a staging area, that palm tree. They definitely got the angle of attack on me. And now we got airplanes overhead. That's just fantastic. Yeah, that's noisy. <sighs> okay, anyway, before we get into this specific car, I want to cover two particular Charger models that led up to it, if you will. I mean, actually, I shouldn't say that because uh, the Scat Pack, this uh, did emerge uh, at the same time as the first one. It's been around for a little while. Uh, but anyway, I want to get into these two because they're great fun. God, these birds are pissed off. They piss off. The love of God. You'd think having someone around here would bother them. You know what I'm going to do is scare the crap out of them with this car in a minute. Uh, anyway, uh, two particular models. In 2015, uh, the SRT, and SRT, by the way, stands for Street uh, Race Technology, if I uh, remember that correctly. And it's basically Chrysler's version of Ford's uh, SVT, Special Vehicle Team, and, uh, you know, AMG for Mercedes or M for BMW. It's their performance division. Vision, and they make cars uh, based on, you know, what's out there at the time from Chrysler. Uh, and in 2015, they made a car called the Hellcat, uh, which was absolutely insane. Uh, 707 horsepower. Uh, it was a supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi. Uh, it was made to dive into the muscle car wars going on at the time with the Camaro SS, the Z28, the CTSV, and dive in it did. I mean, it was just absolutely insane. And they started putting that motor in everything, which I love Chrysler for. Uh, there was also a Hellcat Charger, I believe, uh, if not that year, then the next. Uh, but the car was absolutely nuts. Nuts, and uh, you know it, um, it. It just took the world by storm. People went crazy for it, uh, but there was a certain segment of buyer who thought the Hellcat was for pussies. And as such, in 2018, Chrysler comes out with the Challenger Demon. Now you're looking at 808 horsepower, uh, a car that just, I mean, you couldn't even have envisioned. So when I was a kid, and you know, we talked about that Corvette uh, yesterday, the uh, 84 Corvette that had 200 horsepower, uh, which was quite a lot for the time. Uh, we talked about, you know, some of the 60s cars that had 400, 500 horsepower, L88 cars, race engines. Man, there was nothing, nothing like this. I mean, uh, you you know, the technology, as much as I hate the way uh, that it progressed and, and did stuff to cars that I don't like, it is inarguable that when applied to sheer dramatic brute force horsepower, uh, it went places that nobody ever had before. And uh, I think the uh, the Demon definitely uh, is the poster child for that. It went from 0 to 30 in 1 second, 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds, 0 to 105.1 and would run a quarter mile of about 9.6 at 140. <laughs> I mean, this is... 
These are numbers that are otherworldly. They don't, here's, okay, yeah, you know, you could tune the thing, you could put race slicks on it. By the way, the NHRA banned it because it didn't have a, uh, a roll cage that they demanded in a sub 10 second car. So there's no class you could run a Dodge Demon in. Uh, when tuned correctly and boosted to its maximum, uh, the thing could pull a wheelie. It was the first production car in world history, as far as I know, uh, that could actually pull a wheelie in stock trim. And I mean, that is just, you know, again, we have entered into uh, something that there's no coming back from. Uh, I shouldn't say that because there is, we are coming back from. But anyway, uh, it's absolutely astounding and uh, it definitely uh, defies logic. But so you've got all this interest in these unbelievable products like the Hellcat and the Demon, uh, but not everybody has that kind of money. Uh, they didn't make very many demons at all, mind you. So they were a fortune. They cost, oh, they're well over a hundred grand a day to get one. So here it is, the Scat Pack. And that is an historical name uh, from Chrysler. It didn't come out at all recently. This was something that uh, came out in the, uh, I want to say the late 60s, maybe the early 70s. Uh, it was a play on the Rat Pack. You remember... Uh, uh, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and uh, uh, who, uh, well, what's his little Sammy Davis, you know, the, the rat pack, they called it the scat pack. Uh, not about animal poop, but about, you know, the verb to go, to get out, to move out, to hurry away. And uh, it was an exclusive club of cars uh, that could run in the 14 second quarter mile. Not in the nine seconds, by the way, but the 14 seconds. Uh, you had the Charger RT, the Coronet RT, the Dart GTS, and uh, later on the the uh, uh, Coronet Super B. Uh, and, uh, you know, they used an ad agency. They capitalized on it. Uh, they got a bunch of people getting a newsletter, signing up for it who had them. Uh, and uh, that pack was, they called it the Hive. That was the group of people. Like those people who like that Bianchi woman. Uh, I think they have a, a name as well. But same kind of thing, except with scat pack cars. And uh, the Hive was very interested in what their scat pack 14-second uh, quarter mile cars could do. Uh, but of course, that all went away with the malaise era. But there's that name hanging out there. And uh, Dodge brought it back. Uh, they brought it back in 2013 for the SEMA uh, show in um, uh, Las Vegas, which stands for Specialty Equipment Market Association. Doesn't do it justice. I mean, SEMA is an absolute bit of insanity. Uh, if you go out there, it's acres and acres of automotive tuning products of every variety and some of the most insane cars that have ever been you know shown to the public make a you know make a showing at the SEMA show it's if, if you've never done one uh, it's something that every car guy has to do at least once it's just absolutely incredible uh, but anyway the scat pack was brought back for that uh, and then in 2015 it returned um, uh, as a trim model and uh, then you know, a few years on, it became this, the 2019 Scatback wide body, and uh, that did add a few more bits and pieces to it. Believe it or not, and here's the thing, as we're sitting here looking at this rather insane looking ridiculous car uh, with hood scoops, three of them in the hood, insanely wide fenders, 305 series front and rear tires. Uh, I don't remember what they call these wheels, like, you know, Satan's fire breath or something. Uh, but um, this is the... This is the, you know, I'm telling you again with this coronavirus whiskey, it's absolutely killing me. This is the sensible choice. This is the compromise car. This is the one the accountant looks at and says, okay, well, you know, the 808 horsepower demon isn't, uh, it's not going to work for me. I need something a little bit more sensible. So he ends up with a 392 cubic inch, 6.4 liter, uh, naturally aspirated Hemi, putting out 485 horsepower, 475 foot pounds of torque uh, with, again, 305 series wheels, uh, a widened stance, roll bars, performance suspension, SRT spoiler, uh, a big air dam in the front that looks like something off of an IMSA car. Uh, the headlights, by the way, are not what they immediately appear to be. Uh, you've only got two. Uh, the center headlights, the inner ones, are air cooling ducts for the engine. Uh, goes right through into there and cools the engine. I mean, so this insane, ludicrous car uh, is what the sensible guy buys. And I just, you know, 
again, I absolutely have to love Chrysler for that. I think that's very, very cool. Uh, it's a big car, it's a long car, and it's a heavy car. And that's a, one of the reasons why uh, the Challenger has never really been up to track duty uh, the way that the, uh, the Camaro and the uh, uh, Mustang versions have, you know, of the high performance thing. Uh, but this one, this wide body uh, scat pack with, you know, a little under 500 horsepower is considered to be one of the most trackable uh, challengers made and will certainly hold its own. I mean, the Mustang or the Camaro are going to beat it at the racetrack, but you might not care uh, because you're going to drive to the racetrack in much more comfort. Uh, you're going to feel something. Uh, your backseat passengers are actually going to be comfortable as you drive to the racetrack. And uh, it is just a much, much better Boulevard Cruiser than either one of those cars. So uh, anyway, I'm going to pause again for a minute. I know I'm doing that a lot lately, but I like getting my head together. So I'm not, man, if you think I am rambling and scatterbrained now, uh, you, you wouldn't like to see it if I just went straight through without pausing. So let me collect my thoughts, get my shit in the back of the car, get the tag on, and uh, we'll go around this car and then go for a spin. Uh, actually, I'll go around the car before I put my crap in, but uh, then we'll do that and go. So hold on a minute. All right, so here we get into it for a minute. So the wide body package adds about six grand or so to the window sticker of this car. And for your six grand, you get these uh, 20 by 11 uh, forged aluminum, they're a devil's rim or something they call them. They're insane. Again, 305s all the way around. When I was a kid, and I remember the ZR1 got, you know, 315 series tires. I mean, it was unheard of. It was maniacal. Uh, and, uh, you know, here it is. This, this car's wearing 300 series tires on the front. <laughs> it just seems insane to me. Uh, you get that uh, big lower air dam there, swooping, you know, air up and uh, keeping downforce on the car. Uh, the um, scat pack already came with this hood. We get flies. Fucking hate flies. Uh, it already came with this hood, which does cooling and also creates downforce. Uh, but it did not come without the wide body package with these big fender flares on the side, uh, which mimic the Hellcat. And by the way, they're still like, they still make the Hellcat and the Hellcat Red Eye. Uh, they make a Scat Pack 1320, which is, of course, uh, the quarter mile foot distance. And uh, that has special things. Any one of these cars you can get with a back seat delete for a dollar, uh, you know, on the option package. Uh, a $1 charge to remove the back seats to have a cargo net or an infant containment net behind the front seats. Uh, it seems dumb in this car because part of its charm uh, is that it actually and truly fits four people in it. So, uh, But anyway, we'll get into it. So you get these wide body things. You get these Brembo brakes, 15.4 inch uh, slotted discs up front with six pistons. Uh, that's going to help bring you down from a high speed in a hurry. Uh, you got four piston units in the back. Uh, you've got Bilstein three mode dampening shocks which uh, you know vary from street to track and work quite well very nice feature uh, I don't know if that SRT spoiler is part of the package or not but it looks good on there uh, and uh, then of course you get all of the Challenger styling cues which I think are just absolutely amazing uh, the taillights on this car which of course hearken to the first Challenger model uh, are an absolute thing of beauty even the Dodge badge between them it just brings you back to to uh, that early muscle car era and looks like it, uh, as does the body line down the side with the big haunches, the swooped up uh, rear quarter panels, uh, the fuel cap, again, straight out of the original muscle car era. Very, very cool. Uh, and, uh, you know, everywhere you look on the car, you get sort of this vibe uh, that it is um, uh, a tasteful modern incarnation of uh, that original car. It could have been crazy and stupid, but it's not. And even the colors are, you know, brought right back from the 60s. You have Plum Crazy, uh, you have Sublime, you have uh, Fate Green, or, yeah, I don't know about that, yeah. This is a uh, white knuckle. <laughs> And again, this is just the kind of crap that I love from Chrysler. Uh, you also do get the original uh, Scat Pack logo back. And forgive all the wet, uh, eh, driving on wet streets. But, you know, it's the Super B logo with a helmet on and some car parts looking angry and pissed off. And that's over the uh, 392 badge. And uh, again, it's just awesome. That's a badge right out of the muscle car era and uh, being used in modern times. Um, here's the thing that I like about cars like that. One of my 
determiners for muscle cars or trucks or any other number of things is will it scare children? And if it doesn't scare children, then it may not be all that you want it to be. Uh, you could also scare cats. So here's what I would do if I own this car because it does have a remote start, which I think is awesome. So you park the thing somewhere like in your parking lot, uh, you know, at work or in your driveway at home and you get a little lawn chair, get out of the way where you can't be seen and wait for an animal or a person to come near this car. And then you do this. I guarantee you that cat or that person is going to jump 92 feet in the air. They just are. And uh, that is, uh, again, a thing of awesomeness. A really good muscle car should scare children. I mean, did you hear the exhaust note out of this thing? I mean, it's epic, epic note. Uh, you got those big twice pipes at the back. Oh, God, I tell you, uh, it's cool. Uh, the concept car back in 06 when it was at the... Um, uh, at the auto show was a hardtop coupe like the old muscle cars, you know, of the 60s and 70s. Uh, this one is not. It does have a C pillar uh, right behind the front glass, uh, but they very cleverly styled the glass so that it doesn't look like it's there. You can't really see it, so it does look like a, a hardtop coupe setup. And uh, again, yeah, just neat stuff. Let's look inside the trunk. Oh, God. It's a little bit heavy with that spoiler. Uh, nice size trunk in there. You're going to be able to fit your toddlers and infants with no problem. Uh, you will have to lift them up over a pretty good ledge to get in, though. Uh, it's sort of a top trunk instead of a top and side. Uh, the seats do fold down if you have longer cargo. Again, your golf clubs, your sniper rifles, your, um, you know, whatever it is you need to take with you, you can fit in here pretty much. And uh, that is one of the things that I do really like about the Challenger is it remains a big car and part of that is just coincidental because it happened to be based on a sedan platform uh, but uh, that really has benefited it in my mind uh, in an era where you know cars taking up too much real estate are kind of frowned on uh, this thing is unashamedly big and uh, you know heavy weighs about 4300 pounds which uh, of course does not help with its handling that's why it has to have so much mother locked it Apparently you have to pull more than once when it's locked. I just cracked a finger on that thing. It flies. Oh, God, get out of here. You know, you'd think at least the birds could eat the damn flies. Do something for me. And again, problems with oh, the hood release. Okay. So here we go. Here is a uh, SRT 6.4 liter Hemi naturally aspirated eight cylinder. It's a familiar engine. It's been around for a while. It's certainly not new to 2019. Uh, 485 horsepower, 475 foot pounds of torque. Uh, you could get it with either a standard six speed manual gearbox, which of course is, you know, the true performance choice. Uh, but it's very difficult to argue against the eight speed torque flight that this car has with the flippities on the steering wheel uh, that shifts faster and turns in better fuel economy uh, than the um, uh, than the manual does you know it's it's sort of annoying that automatics have gotten so good uh, that they can outperform manuals in terms of things that manuals used to outperform automatics with and uh, you're getting your manual more for personal and quaint reasons than for uh, anything that you can justify by quarter mile times or um, uh, or fuel economy so uh, and this one does have that torque flight it does have the eight speed uh, but anyway very very simple and very muscle car era e I mean you don't have big vacuum lines running everywhere. Uh, you have a very simple block sitting square between the front fenders, you know, under those black caps or those Bilstein shock absorbers. And uh, the Chrysler has done a very nice job of hiding the technology in this car and making it, again, look like a simple retro car, even under the hood. And uh, that is something that I do have to give them credit for. I end up giving Chrysler a lot of credit. I'm a GM guy to the core, but I have to say I think Chrysler... <laughs> Excuse me, Chrysler stylistically uh, has um, has created something more true uh, to the original muscle car, and you can see through that. So there you go. You know these hood scoops are all functional. That's another thing that I like. 
that uh, there's flies everywhere now. Uh, the uh, rear view mirror sensors there, all that stuff looks very Mercedes-ish to me. Okay, inside, this thing does have some optional leather and Alcantara. Uh, the black and the red, it's very dramatic. It contrasts nicely with the white. Uh, the door panel, same effect. You've got this red stitching. And uh, this is some of the era where you can start to see where Mercedes-Benz had its influence. Uh, this window switch setup, it's not a Mercedes unit, but it's designed exactly like one. Uh, ditto the uh, pull handle as well. Uh, you do have a neat little cup holder here that... Uh, uh, thank God it's a little bit deep, so when you're cornering at like 0.97 or whatever this thing's capable of on the skid pad, it won't come flying out. Uh, power driver seat, uh, red trimmed floor mats, all very nice. And uh, again, your Canadians are going to be fairly chipper back there. I mean, you know, these seats are almost all the way back, and you still have a little bit of leg room. Uh, you know, if anyone who's not mean Joe Green is sitting up front, you're going to be able to fit a you know, five, seven to six foot Canadian back there, and he's not going to complain too much. His visibility is shit. I mean, you get uh, the side window from a space capsule or something, but um, otherwise you're going to be fairly happy. I don't know why up there the uh, baby seat anchor is up. I think that's ridiculous. I certainly hope there haven't been any babies near the scar uh, because that would definitely harm the value. And I tell you what, I'm going to take this opportunity again to pause, uh, not because I need it, but I'm going to put my crap in the back, put the tag on so we can just hop in and go without uh, having to get out again in a minute. All right, so let's hop in this thing and see what we got. Uh, honestly, this car is another one of those, um, you know, Bill would go to prison if he owned one cars, and that's why... Honestly, I really can't. I mean, it's just too temptation, uh, too much temptation. It's just not a good thing. Uh, the idea that I would even, even this conservative, you know, sub 500 horsepower challenger, this one, the accountant challenger uh, would be a problem for me. Uh, start, stop button again, looks very Mercedes-ish to me. Oh, God, listen to that. And then you get that little crazy Super B logo, that uh, Scat Pack logo that comes up. Uh, you see that I've left it on the quarter mile screen. Uh, you can uh, the, customize this interior screen, the digital screen, between the retro gauges, you know, that are dumb in the sense that... Let me turn some air on here, by the way. No, that's the... It's a little bit... Uh, a little bit humid all of a sudden. But uh, anyway, even though the gauges are kind of dumb because there's much better and much clearer gauges, I still like them. I still absolutely love them. Uh, you know, with the retro look from the earlier Challenger, uh, they also look a little bit Mustang-ish to me, but um, yeah, I don't know, the cone shaped, it's all very neat. Uh, you see you got this fat leather steering wheel with the uh, flippities at, uh, uh, on the side, the Dodge with the uh, SRT logo or the RT logo. Oh, God. I say that's good. And I've got my Bluetooth connected. As much as I do love vintage cars, I have to admit that I do sort of enjoy getting in something modern that has uh, some technology that lets things go. You know, if, as an old guy who can barely program the sprinklers at his house, it was very easy for me to connect my phone and start playing around with this system. Uh, but anyway, there you go. So it's got a very nice fat steering wheel with lovely leather on it nice to grip you got your gauge package there you go through different screens your vehicle info uh, you get a speedometer up there uh, you can get a speed warning yeah, yeah, I definitely need that diagnostics uh, we can set up the screens all of its customizable which gauges are there the uh, uh, up in the corners the compass you've got on the left the temperature on the right that can all be changed and uh, you know you could spend hours going through that crap uh, you can also use um, Apple CarPlay with this thing and the voice command then becomes the Siri thing that little Islamic girl will take your commands on an iPhone uh, you've got crazy Chrysler's Uconnect over here, which, uh, you know, is a little long in the tooth at this point, but is an absolutely great system. And, you know, for me, it's, again, the Starship Enterprise. I, I, I would never need anything remotely more modern than this. It's already too much. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's a fine system. As I found out, they 
also use it in Ferraris. When I did that California the other day, it had a Uconnect in it, which I thought was great. Uh, but anyway, you get your radio, you get your Bluetooth, uh, you got your climate controls here, your heated steering wheel, your uh, heated and cooled seats. That's part of an option package this has. Uh, you could get into apps, so I guess we can get into Instagram and uh, where is the damn air conditioning? Why am I not coming out the vents here? To go back into climate for a minute. And that's going down. I don't want it to go down. I'm going to come up the vents. <sighs> anyway, um, you see, there's all kinds. Of, I mean, there's pages and pages of you can update your Snapchat and make a TikTok video for other snowflakes. Uh, you can dim the mirror. You can get into the seat controls, the compass, blah, blah, blah. Market. I mean, you can go shopping at Whole Foods. Uh, performance pages are interesting. So let's get into that for a second. We're going to wait. That's loading. Our temperature is this. Oh, AC is off. There we go. That's going to help out. Okay, so here it is. This is kind of fascinating. So not only do we have over here, and we'll get back to that, where you can uh, time your quarter mile. And you can see whoever's been driving this thing is an absolute pussy. Uh, best time, 15.5. This car is capable of the 12. So uh, whoever's using it is uh, is not putting it to the challenge. Uh, and we'll see if we can. I don't know if I'm going to find enough road space to do that, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, it also has launch control here that seems pretty easy to use. Uh, I pressed that. I haven't tried it yet, but I pressed it. It says so to vehicle must be, and we'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, so here's the performance package. So you've got your horsepower, uh, your G-force, let's click to add a widget, uh, reaction time, eighth mile, quarter, let's make that the quarter mile time, and uh, we'll make that the uh, best quarter mile time. So there we've got that there. Uh, we can add another widget here, gauges, let's see what gauges we can have, steering angle, I like that. Uh, engine torque. I mean, you know, you could go absolutely insane um, setting all this stuff up the way that you want to. Let's see what the uh, uh, do the steering angle. That's kind of interesting. Let's go back. Okay, so we've got our steering angle, our G-force, and uh, horsepower and quarter mile. Uh, timers, uh, acceleration and braking, drag, uh, gauges. Uh, oil temp, oil pressure, battery voltage, coolant, uh, big G4, I'm going to leave it on that. Uh, engine, we've got, um, I don't know what the hell all this is, it measures your torque and horsepower, uh, which I would think is what dyno, look at that, a built-in dyno on the damn car. I mean, technology has just gone absolutely insane, and I've missed most of it. Uh, anyway, down here you've got your uh, hands-on controls for the infotainment, browse, I love it. Uh, and a true honest-to-God volume knob. And uh, why don't we have it? There we go. Uh, which is uh, neat stuff for an old guy. Then your climate control and a very cool T-handled shifter for that torque flight. A couple of cheap little cup holders here. Uh, center console. Uh, pretty great place to stuff, you know, a small 9mm, and uh, there's one of these Easter eggs this car has. What is that? The early Dodge Brothers uh, logo is hidden under the uh, um, uh, center console lid. Uh, you have some auxiliary inputs and a 12 volt and USBs. Uh, over here, got a book set and a window sticker, which I'll pull out. And there's a key lock for the wheels and stuff. But here we go. So here's a 2019 Scalinger Challenge Scalinger. I love that Challenger RT Scat Pack Wide Body uh, from a base price of 39 grand. This one ended up at 53,000. So obviously, it's got some pretty good options on there. And um, yeah, there it is. You know, it's 6,000. But where's that one? Yeah, 6,000 bucks for the wide body, uh, which I don't know if I mentioned other than the Brembos and the wheels and tires and. Uh, the uh, wide body stuff. You also get the uh, bigger front and rear roll bars that uh, does make this handle pretty well at the track. Um, you know, safety wise, you got your blind spot. It's all optional on this, not standard. Uh, you've got, um, uh, you know, front and rear collision assist and all that kind of crap. Uh, you can sign up for traffic, whatever. You know, it's all, it's all too much. Uh, in here, that is definitely a nice spot little shelf for drugs, another spot for a knife or a gun, and uh, a pretty good functional uh, glove box. So, all right, let's get it in drive. 
and let's see what else. I'm gonna put it into, um, where you got back into apps. Uh, where the hell is modes? Okay, drive modes. Let me hit that, okay, there we go. So I'm gonna go into sport. What do you mean, can I want launch, launch control right now? All right, so we're gonna go into sport mode. How do I do this? I know this is touch screen. Why wouldn't let me go into sport mode? It says auto. Oh, there we go, okay, in park maybe. Uh, so that's now changed the transmission to sport. Uh, paddle shifters are on, traction is in sport. Uh, a little traction off thing has happened there, so we're ready to do donuts. If I went into track, what does that do? Uh, it's even deeper settings and uh, <laughs> electronic stability ESP is off. Uh, I have a feeling we'd be in a lot of trouble if I keep it in track. So let's just go into sport for now and see what happens. Oh God, and the sound from that thing. Yeah, you know, the tires, we were having a little trouble breaking them loose in that Corvette yesterday. Now, it was drier than uh, today, so those, uh, you know, those tires were hooking up. But I have a feeling this thing isn't going to care if it's dry pavement or wet pavement at all. Uh, in fact, when I was merging on the on-ramp this morning, there was a guy being kind of a douche, uh, you know, in the right lane of the interstate, uh, trying to pass cars on the left, not at all worried that someone might be merging. And uh, I hammered it in anger a little bit and the car broke loose at like 60 miles an hour. It threw me for a little bit of a loop, I gotta say. Right, let me back up a little bit here. I'm gonna turn off the uh, air conditioning as well so we get maximum torque. Didn't like us reversing that quickly. Now I'm gonna kinda ease into this a little bit. I have the feeling if I just hammer it, bad things are, well, let's just hammer it. <laughs> okay, so instant eruption of those 305 tires, uh, a brapping from the exhaust that's, oh God, is that epically nice. And uh, it does, you know, yeah, obviously we had a little bit of tail drift and I think we've got a 55-45 split on the distribution. So the car's gonna be ass happy, uh, certainly on corners, if not um, in a straight line. Uh, but it felt very controllable and very nice. I do know it has a very short turn-to-turn uh, -turn steering uh, ratio, uh, which is good for sportiness. And again, even though this is the compromise car in terms of uh, horsepower versus cost versus everything else, uh, many people say that this is the car of choice, the scat body, uh, scat pack wide body uh, for the track. I, I mean, when you get into seven or 800 horsepower, power it's almost too much I, I you know a, a guy I knew he put an LS supercharged LS in a Miata so you've got this 2,500 pound car or less uh, you know with 500 600 horsepower he did a couple of laps around the track came in white-faced and said you know this car is lethal it is uh, far too dangerous and uh, you know you get a little bit of that in the uh, the demon and the uh, Hellcat uh, with 500 horsepower uh, this car feels probably a little bit more balanced and will give a, uh, an average driver like myself a lot more confidence. Now, if I hammer it here and take the turn, I'm going to end up going across into the other lanes of traffic like those idiot Mustang drivers at the, um, at the uh, Cars and Coffee. But... Holy shit, is this thing quick. And man, does it sound nice. And that was just sport mode. So let's get into track mode because I hear that even changes the exhaust some more. Electronic stability control set for the track. I presume what that means is it's not going to uh, interfere with what you're doing at all. So uh, you better not be a complete idiot. Uh, which I desperately want to be. I also heard that this torque flight will always find the right gear, that it's fantastic and that you shouldn't even bother shifting yourself uh, unless you just want to have the fun and there's nothing wrong with that idea at all. Let's get back over here. As long as I'm driving this obnoxious thing, there's no reason I can't jerk merge. I 
I see there's a victim in a Corvette. He's going to think he's quicker. Yeah, maybe he is. It's definitely choosing very quickly a lower gear. Oh, oh boy, now we're going to go for it. Um, you know, just a little, wow, just a little pressure. I mean, a quarter inch on the throttle, and listen to that. I want to say that went down two gears. That's always been my complaints with these uh, sporty automatics, is that uh, if you're not paddle shifting, if you're not manually shifting it, uh, they don't dive deep enough into the gears. You know, you want to have... Um, you want to have second and the thing goes into third or fourth. Uh, it seems to me that Chrysler has sort of addressed that on this car. Oh, wow. All right, well, look, I'm not going to... Uh well, okay, I'll die. yeah, while we're waiting, I'll just give you this. Uh, so this is a 2019 Dodge Challenger Scatback Wide Body, 29,000 miles, knuckle white over uh, black and red leather and Alcantara. Uh, you know, obviously based on the best quarter mile time, this was not owned by some nitwit like myself. It was owned by someone who really didn't abuse it. And uh, this car is for sale. Uh, down at Auto House of Naples, and I really do have to thank them for letting me take it out and beat the crap out of it. <laughs> I really do. Uh, and that's just the stuff that's uh, on camera. Um, you can reach those guys at autohousenaples.com or at 239-263-8500. Uh, uh, again, with the promises, the Cordoba, it's coming, I swear. Um, in fact, the stuff that I was going to do to it, I've decided not to do. I'm just going to get it ready and do it. Uh, we also have an old XJ6 um, uh, uh, Jaguar, uh, White Snake style. Uh, we're going to have that soon. And uh, if uh, things come together, a 34 Ford uh, Roadster with a steel body, that's pretty damn cool. I've got cars in my way. Merge lane. Oh, God, I hate traffic. 500 horsepower of insanity, and I've got minivans and cheap liberties in front of me. I'm not being 17 anymore. I just can't weave in and out of them like a complete idiot because I know there's going to be a sheriff's cruiser up there waiting to uh, waiting to arrest me. All right, the hell with it. I'll wait till we get to the on-ramp, and we'll hit it again. So I will see you in uh, just a couple minutes. So this is kind of cool, and I hadn't noticed it before, but when you press OK, you got all kinds of different, oh wait, no, no, I'm doing the quarter mile, that's not what I want. All right, you can do braking distance, G-forces, peak G-forces, lap timer, lap history, top speed, and uh, zero to 60, zero to 100, eighth mile, and back to quarter mile. So again, pretty cool shit to keep yourself entertained and occupied as you're driving around. Thank you for having a look today. Really appreciate it. We'll see you at the next one. Take care.